Hello, this is Watch All About with another watch review. And in this review, we're looking at an offering by a brand called Advisor. This is called their Astro Helm, and it's the antique version. So this is the package it comes in. So if we slip the box out of the surrounding cover, we have the logo on top. This lifts up nicely. Cheeky bit of foam. Uh, ooh, we have the certificate of authenticity within that top section. There we have it, with an international warranty, and we can release the watch. There we go, so very nice and neatly uh, held within uh, the uh, custom cut foam, so that's good. Let's shove that out of the way now. And here we have the watch itself. So the Advisor Astro Helm, um, as you can see, it's very uh, Panerai inspired. A um, couple of interesting details that are slightly different to uh, the usual Panerai uh, style though. It uh, has the IP rated gold rather than brass or bronze. Usually brass or bronze stainless steel for this kind of watch. So it is a little bit unusual uh, at first glance, uh, that's for sure, especially being that it's uh, highly polished as well. Uh, and I also really like the um, uh, Californian antique plated dial as well, but we'll have a look at that in closer detail later on. So let's discuss some of the specs. First of all, the price. RRP is $349 or about £250. Um, currently though, it's available for $249, which is about £175. So when you take that into consideration, uh, you know, it's a uh, mechanical movement, any mechanical movement watch with a sapphire crystal under £200, I usually think is definitely something worth investigating. Um, you know, that's about the right price point for me personally. So size wise, if I put it on my approximately seven and a quarter inch wrist. So we've got a diameter of 44 mil, uh, a height. Now the spec says 14 mil, but I got my calipers on it and uh, to the top of the domed crystal, it's a uh, 16 and a half mil uh, and then a lug to lug length of 52.8 mil uh, so traditional you know panerai size pretty uh, straightforward nothing crazy or out of the ordinary there apart from maybe the slightly taller height due to the uh, incredibly domed dial uh, in, uh, incredibly domed crystal talk about that in a little bit weight wise 100 grams so it does feel pretty chunky pretty good on the wrist uh, for you know considering it's got a leather strap on it uh, water resistance, 10 atmospheres or 100 meters. So, you know, it does have a relative amount of uh, protection there, thanks to the screw in crown. Um, movement Seiko NH35, and I've put it on my Lepsi watch scope, and it's coming in at a really impressive plus, plus 4.9 seconds a day. So, really, really well uh, um, adjusted there. Whoop. And there it is in all its glory. Stock. Uh, Completely stock uh, rotor, nothing uh, cus customized, but you know you can't expect that at a watch costing this much. Uh, Twenty-four mil lugs, so uh, again, classic uh, Panerai kind of width size, uh, and it suits the uh, the size of the watch just right. Uh, one year warranty you get as well, so uh, you are covered for for one year. Uh, the loom used is classed as old radium, so it has this vintage kind of. Uh, color to them. The The strength is okay. It's nothing out to this world. Uh, it doesn't, it's not blindingly, um, you know, fast charge and it doesn't last forever, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it's what you would expect for a watch costing this much. So uh, finally, it's worth mentioning the uh, Californian dial. I think it's pretty interesting, uh, the fact that with the Californian dial, you have half Roman numerals, half um, numbers, um, and uh, no one actually knows the reasons why uh, it's named a Californian dial, apart from the fact that, you know, Rolex and Panerai, they started this kind of trend. Maybe it was extra popular in California, but no one, you know, no one can really find out the exact source of it. So that's, uh, that's quite an interesting uh, point. And I think uh, visually it's, it's quite interesting as well. So moving on to the uh, watch itself, let's start off with a case because there's something I really want to get off my chest. And that is this incredibly domed sapphire crystal. Yes, it is very impressive to look at, as you can see there. Look at the absolute mammoth dome on that. And it is double dome, so it uh, uh, has a dome on the underside as well. 
um, to stop any distortion and you would get a hell of a lot of distortion with a dome this sphere but the reflections on it are really 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 strong um, in some instances it's even hard to tell the time because uh, the reflections are that uh, that much there doesn't seem to be any sort of anti-reflective coating which is a real shame considering you know how uh, highly domed this uh, this crystal is so uh, it was an absolute nightmare taking any pictures uh, with this uh, of this watch getting any decent um, um, shots of the dial just because of the, the sheer amount of reflections going on really there's no way unless it's completely washed out like that against a white wall but then you can't really see it particularly crisp um, so that's that's one of the main issues I have with the watch but you know it's still a very cool um, dome it's very highly domed and you know that is nice to look at it's just the reflections are out of this world so it would have been so much better if they had a decent anti-reflective coating on the underside. Moving on to the case then, as mentioned before, classic uh, Panerai like cushion shape. Um, the unusual thing about it is the fact that it's rose gold plated, usually, you know, uh, and it is polished, usually it would be stainless steel or brass or bronze. Uh, so certainly this is a little bit out there. Um, I personally, you know, it doesn't really float my boat, but obviously each to our own, different tastes, different people. So I'm sure to many people, they will really appreciate the fact that it's a uh, rose gold. And inspecting it closely, you know, the, the machining of it is really good. The finishing is really, really uh, top notch as well. And it's obvious that this is a high quality, uh, well-made timepiece. Uh, the crown is a screw and crown. So as you can see, you can screw it a little bit, pop it out and then away we go. It is a bit of a shame that it's unsigned, uh, however. It would have been you know, much nicer if we had some sort of logo engraved on there uh, because it, you know, it does look a little bit plain. And um, you know, it could, maybe that's a little bit lazy that they haven't done anything on it, which is a bit of a shame. Moving on to the case back then, uh, stainless steel case back. Uh, the details surrounding the exhibition window are really nicely engraved, really deep, uh, crystal clear as well. And then we have the exhibition window with the uh, logo uh, sort of printed on the underside. So that's a, a nice little touch there. Uh, we go. Moving on to the strap then. Uh, nice uh, brown color, which goes well with the, uh, the dial. Um, has this uh, matte kind of finish to it, which is really nice to the touch. And uh, it's uh, clearly a very well-made uh, leather strap as well. As you can see, really neat edging, very neat, decent stitching on it as well. And uh, on the underside, some nice print work as well. Looking at the Pre-V buckle, give that a quick wipe. Uh, we have the Advisor logo engraved nice and neatly on that as well. Um, so there it is. And finally, if we have a look at the dial, if we can get a decent view of it, um, you can see there in all its glory, the brushed antique plating, sort of at a 45 degree angle, which is uh, something really unusual that I must admit I've never seen before. So uh, well done to them for, for creating something like this. Uh, and then the uh, loomed numerals are all really well um, printed on as well. Uh, you can't really see this automatic here in red. That's Pretty unreadable, uh, however, it's still there, so that's fine. And then our date window is just a, a white, uh, you know, the window's cut out of the dial with a white uh, date wheel, which obviously is the, the stock wheel as well. Uh, the hands are pretty uh, nice design, uh, goes well with the, the dial. Uh, they're polished, so they reflect the light, as you can see, but so does everything else. Uh, and uh, they're filled with lumen, little tiny point at the, at the top. Okay, so let's get the macro lens on and we'll look at it in closer detail. Okay, starting with the dial, if we zoom in, get a decent shot of this. So print work there, nice and neat. And here we can see our uh, brushed plating finish as well, which is quite nice and unusual as you can see. Not, u not uniform at all, so it must have been done in a, an interesting way. There's our neat date window cut out and our loom filled hour markers as well. 
our hands. Uh, I'm getting in focus, you can see there, polished, pretty well manufactured as well. We have this outside railway track as well, uh, which is very nice and neatly done. Okay, moving on to the case. Here's our very highly polished side. Got screws on the outside of the lugs, which is a nice little detail as well. Flipping it over, here's our crown. There we go, nice decent grip, really easy to use. But again, it's a, it's a shame it's got such a, a plain unsigned uh, end. <clears throat> if I just give this a quick wipe. Here's our very nice engraving around the outside of the, of the exhibition window on the case back. And then looking at our exhibition window itself, there's our logo printed on the inside of the window. And then we have our movement itself. I can get a half decent shot of that. There it is. So the uh, Seiko NH35, you know, really solid, really sturdy, dependable movement. Nothing too crazy to look at. You know, it's got a little bit of cheeky brushing on the bridges, which is still fair enough. Um, and a pretty standard uh, industrial kind of looking uh, rotor. As you can see there, we have the uh, signage of the model there. So moving on to the leather strap, let's look at the top. You can see a nice big, nice thick rustic grain very nice uh, to, to touch here's our keeper loops and we've got some stitching down the outside as well again nicely done here's our sealed edge very nice and neat uh, flipping it over here's some details on the underside And then finally, if I just give it a quick wipe, the Preby buckle with our logo, the Pfizer logo, nice and deeply engraved. Very nice and neat there. Okay, so the Advisor Astra Helm Antique. Uh, quite an interesting looking watch, I'm sure you'll, you'll agree. Um, Certainly got a couple of things going for it, which are very unusual. First of all, you know, the, the brushed antique plating dial. I really, really like that. I really uh, enjoyed that. California dial you don't see too often either, so that's a nice little plus. Um, now, you might love it or you might hate it, but certainly the IP plated rose gold case is different. You know, that you can't deny that. You don't see that too often on a, a watch of this, uh, this style. Personally, not for me, but obviously... Uh, some of you may be really into it. Uh, the only, the main issue I have, um, well, two issues really, is it, it's a shame it doesn't have a signed crown and just the, the anti-reflective coating, the non-existent AR coating on the sapphire crystal is a real bummer because it's such, uh, you know, it's really impressive, the dome dial, you know, it's really, really tall. It looks great on the, on the wrist, uh, but it's just so reflective. Um, you know, it may, it may cause some people who have not not perfect eyesight you know a little bit of difficulty with legibility so that's obviously my main concern for that uh, and uh, just uh sometimes you can't really read the time too well because of the reflection so hopefully moving forward you know they do address that and either reduce the amount of dome or add a decent uh, ar coating to the underside but apart from that current price of 175 pounds there's no denying that it is a, a really well-made watch. You know, everything is really solid. Uh, you know, even when we've been looking at it in close up, everything is really well finished, really well put together, and it feels solid in the hand as well. It's just, uh, you know, whether whether the style is for you and whether you can overlook the uh, the re reflective crystal. Okay, so this was the Advisor Astro Helm Antique, and that's what it's all about.